Hello, people. How you doing today? And this is our weekly uh, wrap-up show. And I'm here with James Proctor. We're going to be doing it together once a week. And we're going to talk about stuff that has happened in the mob genre in the last week, maybe the last two weeks, but it's going to be fresh, pretty fresh stuff. James, how you doing today? Hey, doing really good. How are you, Lee? Good. I mean, so last uh, we did this show last week. We had good success with it. So we said, okay, let's do this once a week and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, quite a few things have happened this week. What did you say that? Yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, there's always something new happening. So, you know, excited to bring it to the viewers. You know, uh, one thing that I heard was uh, uh, there was a show done um, by uh, Mikey Scars. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, about the Curtis Sliwa hit when he was right. hit by supposedly by John Gotti and some soldiers. John Gotti Jr. ordered some soldiers to do it. Mm -hmm. See, I know Curtis Lewa. He's uh, he helped my brother when my brother was homeless. Right. Uh, I did two interviews with him in the '90s on his radio show. I always found him to be a nice guy. Uh, but you know, um, Mikey Scars kind of put it really, really well when he said that if Curtis Lewa just kept the women out of it of the Gotti family, which he did not, right? Uh, that's when they decided to uh, well, they had to take care of him. Right. Uh, what do you think about that? Do you think if he didn't talk about the women, he, he would have just been an argument amongst men? Yeah, I, I really believe that. You know, he crossed the line there with bringing, bringing up the women. Also, one of the problems that he had just overall is that a lot of people would listen to him. They, you know, they they like what he would bring out. And, you know, he's this vigilante type guy. But the police really didn't like, you know, what he was doing. They didn't like. Uh, all that he was putting out. Yeah, he was there. doing their. He was doing their job. Right. Okay. I remember. I. I. I at that time, I was in uh, New York, and I worked down in Times Square, mm -hmm. and you would see them. This is when they really started becoming popular at the eight, end of the seventies and early eighties, and I would see them everywhere, right. and 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 I I would see them uh, actually stop a lot of crime. Yeah. But at that time, the police weren't too happy with that. The city was very corrupt. The police department was very corrupt. Uh, and we're talking extremely corrupt in the early 70s and 80s. Uh, oh, yeah. Late 70s and early 80s. Uh, yeah. And that that was the thing. They used to have these uh, house. They used to have these clubs where they would all over New York City where uh, a bunch of them uh, would stay. And then they would ride the subways at night when it was very dangerous. People have to understand. Right. Those were very dangerous times in New York. Yes. Uh, but then Curtis Lee got kind of cocky, mm -hmm. uh, got kind of big, got his radio show. And then um, he went on a show one time. I remember he was just attacking John Gotti. And I was like, wow, I can't believe he's saying this stuff. And yeah. then when he went after the his wife, uh, it, it, it was a step too far. Yeah. And um, I used to think different of it. But once Mikey Scars described it, I kind of agree with Mikey Scars. Uh, Curtis Lewa did go too far. But the reality is he's lucky to be alive. He jumped out of the cab by a miracle. Everything worked out for him that day. There's yeah. no reason he should be alive. He was shot in the stomach. He was mm -hmm. shot in vital areas, and he still lived. It's obvious he's a pretty tough guy. Yeah, most definitely. And and I remember also back then you had the – you had the – the, the subway shooter, right? You had the guy that, uh, yeah, Bernard yeah. Katz, Bernard yeah. Katz, and, and, and yeah, that, yeah, that, that was, uh, Bernard Getz came, became kind of a cult hero, yeah, because he stood up against guys and people tried to make it into a, a, a racial thing. It wasn't a racial thing, it was a guy in a subway getting mugged by a group of guys, yeah, and he stood up for himself. He wound up doing one year in jail for uh, possession of a firearm, and yeah. Uh, the jury wouldn't convict them on the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. It seemed like things got better with, you know, as much as, you know, a lot of people like him and hate him, but when Giuliani became mayor, Oh, Giuliani cleaned like the city it. up. It yeah. doesn't matter whether you like him or hate him. Giuliani cleaned the city up. And if people can't admit to that, just right. take a look at how it is now. Yeah. Uh, that's the reality of it. Yeah, had that broken window uh, philosophy. So, you know, trying to get those smaller, smaller crimes that would lead to the you know, the larger crime. So it was, you know, definitely cleaned up, but, you know, and he even went after the mob. I mean, yeah. and he was very successful going after the mob. Yeah. Uh, he, he did an awful lot. 
-hmm. for mayor. Uh, and a lot of people don't like him now because of his personality, because right. a lot of anti-Trump people. But in sure. general, he was a hell of a mayor when he was the mayor of New York City. Anybody yeah. that says otherwise just doesn't understand how New York was back then. Yeah, but it was interesting having Mikey Scars for, you know, because he was there uh, with what happened. And so it was good to, you know, get his perspective, get the perspective and the insider on this. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, Curtis was really, lucky to be alive, to be honest. He's lucky, very lucky. It's a miracle. It's one of those miracles. Yeah. You know, you're shot in the back seat of a cab and you got to escape. And the guy in the front leaves the window open and you literally climbed over his shoulder and dove out the window. I mean, what's the odds of that? I mean, oh, I know. and that they didn't have any uh, uh, anything in the middle blocking people from jumping over the front. So, right. But, you know, it's one of those hits that you would see on TV that sounds yeah. uh, weird, mm -hmm. but, but it was very real. Yeah. Okay, and with exactly. that, we can move on. OK, we're, mm -hmm. we're done with Curtis Sliwa. OK, now we're going to talk about uh, there's, a, there's a lot of there was an interview that has a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, Explain to me why do you think the Chaz Palmitary uh, interview with uh, Jimmy Calandra had so much uh, blowback? As, and we're going to read you some messages underneath uh, the interview and show you what a lot of people thought. Yeah. And, uh, and why do you think it had so much blowback? Well, I mean, you know, Jimmy's uh, very polarizing. And, you know, even with with Chaz, I don't think he was expecting that type of a blowback on the, on the interview, but yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. There was a uh, name of the podcast was rebirth with uh, Jimmy Calandra. And so, you know, Jimmy was talking about, you know, his life, um, you know, how he, um, you know, was in a life of crime, you know, made changes, all that stuff, you know, some of the stuff we've heard before, but, you know, you have a lot of people that just, um, you know, people either like Jimmy or they don't. And so, you know, what I saw was about um, three or four. Let's get to the Lyle Brancata thing, first of all. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were angry because of uh, uh, they felt like um, Chaz Palmitari was is being very unfair to Lilo Brancata. Explain right. to us why they believe that. Yeah. So Lilo uh, Brancato obviously uh, played a C in the Bronx tale. And then, um, and he was a young kid then, but then as he got older, he, he started uh, delving into drugs, you know, had a, a life of crime and ended up getting into a uh, shooting and went to, went to prison. And so he was in jail for a few years, um, got out and, uh, you know, it seemed like he, it does seem like he's, making changes in his life. And he reached out to Chaz just wanting, you know, some help to maybe get back into um, acting, that type of stuff. And Chaz um, said, hey, I don't want anything to do with you. Something like, uh, would you say that uh, Lilo is kind of going through a rebirth? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have Chaz that's uh, friends, uh, close friends with a lot of the police. And so, uh, you know, Chaz had to, I guess, make a decision, you know, would I remain friends with my uh, police friends or would I give Lilo a, a chance? And well, and here's the one problem I have with Lilo. Lilo mm -hmm. still to this day says that he wasn't he kind of blames the cop for shooting mm -hmm. at him. And he right. also doesn't understand. And this is the same problem that he has that Jimmy Calandra have. Mm -hmm. They were at the scene of a shooting where someone died. Yeah both of them right and they neither one of them want to admit that they're as responsible as the guy pulling the trigger because they're right at that scene they yeah. caused that they were part right. of that being caused and um right so they're even identical in that way wouldn't you say yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of similarities there and so um i guess that was part of it uh, you know chad's would interview jimmy that may have had a similar situation as uh uh, Lilo Bercon, uh, Lilo, and he um, won't have anything to do with Lilo. So I guess it rubs some people the wrong way. Why do you think it rubs them the wrong way? Well, you know, with when you look at what happened with um, with 
with Jimmy and, you know, Judy Shimtoff, you know, obviously Tommy uh, pulled the trigger, but, you know, he was in the life. And, but when you have a civilian killed, you know, that it's, it's kind of like what we had with, um, you know, the movement with uh, what, what happened with, um, with Sammy. And, and so it's just when you have civilians involved in it, you know, there's less sympathy. And, and and here are some of the comments. There were 467 comments put down so far after this. Uh, it, the video is doing good. It has 13,000 views. But mm -hmm. the reality is when I interviewed uh, Jimmy and when uh, FBS interviewed Jimmy, uh, we're at 30,000. Mm -hmm. um, so Jimmy doesn't seem to have the same impact that he used to have. Uh, would you say that he's kind of taken it on the chin lately? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing him out there as much with, you know, with videos and, and all that. And obviously if he had 30,000 uh, views, you know, with, with the shows that you did and, and FBS did and 13 now that's, um, you know, it's definitely lower, especially since Chaz is a, a well-known name. And Chaz yeah. has had some pretty big, hundreds of thousands of videos with hundreds of thousands in them. But you know what? The fact yeah. is it's still 13,000. So Jimmy is still popular. Yeah. Or he's uh, uh, people like him and don't like him. Uh, mm -hmm. But the re reality is he still draws uh, fairly good numbers. Sure. Uh, Brian, this is what Brian G says, Chaz, you need to do a part two with Jimmy. Ask him about the time in Pittsburgh, whether or not it's true that he bought uh, TK's girlfriend to a motel and, uh, under false pretense and then tried to get weird with her. And uh, there, I think he has places, Brian has the places messed up, but. Um, uh, yeah. And I, I think he said TK, he doesn't mean. Uh, so TK would be Tommy karate, but he's referring, has to be referring to um, uh, Reynolds. Not, yeah. It was Tommy Reynolds girl. Yeah. And right. that was one of the stories that came out. Once again, we're not here to prove it. True or not, only Jimmy knows and uh, Tommy Reynolds knows right. uh, whether that really happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, Robert Schuler says, Jimmy is one of those guys Sonny would never let see right in the car with that night. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a, a harsh thing. And then you got uh, Brian G. Let's see. I'm not going to read two remarks from one person. When Brian G. was in – when Jimmy was in Vegas – uh, to meet uh, Chaz, he supposedly had dinner with a guy in the old neighborhood. Jimmy got cold feet instead of meet with the guy. He called the cops on him. Uh, Jimmy is a coward. I don't know if he called the cops on him. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, so that, you know, I know that um, this was something that was brought up uh, by Convict Inc., but there's no evidence of that. And so nothing's been, you know, it was brought up, but there's no evidence to collaborate that. I believe it was the guy from uh, DeBella's, um, you know. Oh, you're talking F about convict? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it, and so, you know, we don't have any evidence of, of that, but, you know, that story was put out there and a lot of people believe it, but we don't then know you got one way or another. Vincent the Agost Agostino says uh, Two Face has Jimmy on, but will not give Lilo a second chance for a meeting. Unbelievable! So the, you know, here he is. This guy has a problem with uh, him not giving Lilo a shot, but giving Jimmy a shot. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then let's see. Uh, Max says uh, this guy is involved in a woman being murdered in cold blood in front of her child. He gets to walk free and enjoy his life. Seems unfair that cooperating gets you out of paying the price for heinous crimes. Shame on Chaz for having this slime ball on and giving him a platform. That's kind of harsh. Uh, Jimmy actually did some did some time on that. Uh, yeah, he he did, and I don't. And there's no evidence that a child was there and saw it happen. Yeah. It there, and if it wasn't, was it, it was an older, it was an adult. It wasn't a child. Right. Uh, and, you know, I've talked about this, uh, but see, this is where things get mixed up too. I'm no fan they of do. Jimmy. I'm right. no fan of Jimmy Calandra. Jimmy Calandra is no fan of mine. We've had right. our issues together, our history, but if you're going to say stuff about them, it should be a little more accurate than this people. Yeah. Uh, Okay, then uh, XX212 says, was there a helmet check attendant in the studio? Uh, I guess that's referring to Jimmy's intelligence. Uh, 
Jimmy, he's got to be somewhat intelligent if he has a show uh, that's doing okay. But Jimmy brings it on himself, too, for attacking people and saying really stupid stuff, including yeah. myself. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's a couple more here. Chaz, you know Lilo had a drug problem, basically effed up. He made a big mistake that night, and off-duty cop died. He was no gangster, no killer, just someone with a drug problem. He went away, did his time, and look what Lilo is doing today. So much positivity, helping people with addictions. But because you donate and support police, you don't acknowledge Lilo. But you put this guy on. Shame. Doesn't make sense. But a good uh, look on your part, uh, but not a good look on your part. Saddest thing in life is wasted talent. But that kid has talent and deserves a second chance in life. I'm not talking about Jimmy. Okay, so th that guy, AJ, has a pretty solid point, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's where I was saying that Chaz has, a, you know, does a lot of fundraisers, does a lot of stuff for the for the police. And so and that that part's true. And then, you, you know, I still think that you need to uh, one thing Lilo needs to do is he has to accept responsibility. He was there when it happened. And so. You know, there's still um, he hasn't necessarily accepted responsibility 100 percent, in my opinion. And and I think that's what it is. I mean, yeah. Chaz Palantir, is in, he's in a position where this guy has not won't come out fully and say, look, it's my fault. This cop died. Uh, he says it and then he'll back off of it. And uh, the reality is, I think uh, Chaz is kind of put over a barrel. But if you're going to be put over a barrel, Chaz, I think he said something that really irked people during the interview. Mm -hmm. He told Jimmy was talking about how he had a flipping stuff on people. And then he said he understood. Yeah. Uh, that bothered a lot of people, didn't it? Right. Yeah. You have a lot of people that just, you know, if you cooperate or if you're a uh, informant, you know, any uh, testify against someone, you know, they, they really, a lot of people don't like that. And so you, you know, you're going to see that, uh, negative uh remarks regarding that so do you think that you'll see lilo eventually wind up on this show or do you think there's too much pressure on him because it was a police officer involved for chaz palmetary to put him on yeah i don't i don't see uh chaz uh backtracking on that um chaz isn't going to have that negative uh publicity you know i, I really i do believe that uh, Chaz wasn't expecting as much negativity to the Jimmy interview. You know, Chaz has uh, real close to Michael uh, Francis. He's close to other folks that, you know, have been involved in crime. And, and you don't see that type of, of blowback. But as far as Lilo, I don't see that that happening. OK, now let's bring up Sammy Gravano. OK, now Sammy Gravano, this is kind of a, a peculiar thing. Uh, he did a fireside chat. He's been getting a lot of pushback on his uh, lives mm -hmm. because he keeps making mistakes and uh, Mikey Scars keeps uh, showing the mistakes he's making, some of the things that he's saying that aren't true or he right. said in a different way on other shows. Our, right. Sammy, uh, our Mikey Scars is just proving him to be a liar. Right. Do you think that, your personal opinion, do you mm -hmm. think that Sammy's going to continue doing these lives or start cutting back on them? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, right now, there's a lull of content. There's not much content that he that he's putting out there, and you know he does have a membership of, and so you know there is a need to get content out there, and and I don't see the lives being permanently. I believe once we get into February and March, when he starts doing the interviews and sit downs with you know people, um, you know like. Michael Francis and and some of you know some of the others um, gangsters out there like from Philadelphia Phil Leonetti you're going to see less of and the, even Sean Atwood who is a very a, a, a lot of people like him a lot of people hate him mm -hmm. I mean he's there's no in between with that guy and yeah. and Sammy Sammy hated him for a long time <laughs> and now he's talking about having him on so that should be interesting so he's he's going to be doing these three interviews now. Yeah, uh, he's already announced it. But I think that 
the people around him really got to think about whether it's worth putting him up doing these lives because he keeps making mistakes. Yeah. And he has a guy that was actually around him, uh, Mikey Scars, that's mm-hmm. calling him out on these lies continuously. Uh, yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, you exactly. That pretty much sums it up. It does. And, and also, you know, this is like we've talked about before. This is one of the only times I've seen uh, someone get under uh, his collar, talking about Sammy's collar. You know, there's something about Mikey Scars that really hits a nerve with with Sammy, and he does a good job of that. So, yeah. Okay, then we're going to have a, okay, and, and we're going to have another story. This is a very interesting story. This is about a, a Genovese soldier. His name is Chris Churchio. I hope I said mm-hmm. that right. Yep, Churchio. You were nice enough to spell it out for me and show me <laughs> So Churchio. So if I didn't say it right, I don't know what to say. But it, um, we can call him Chris the Plumber. We can call yeah, him that the, the Plumber. Where uh, yeah. Chris Churchio the Plumber. He's a pretty popular gangster. And you know, we talk about Curtis Sliwa having uh, a lucky rabbit's tail in this pocket and getting out that window. Mm-hmm. I everything I read about this soldier, uh, this this Genovese soldier. Uh, Chris Turchio is he has the same rabbit in his pocket, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, so this guy started off. So let's talk about his career before the lotto scam. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's definitely a Genovese um, soldier. He's he's been he's been around in that life at least since uh, 2004. The guy's 52 now. And so. He's been around at least for about 20 years. Um, he was known, he lives in Staten Island. He was uh, known for having a plumbing company called RCI Plumbing. And so his first brush with the law is back in 2004, where, you know, he's accused of, you know, trying to bribe um, a union official, I believe. And so um, that's when his his crime uh first was mentioned, at least in public accounts. But then also, as you look at, back at his life, he's done a lot with uh, the Colombo soldiers. His company's been one that has uh, allowed um, money to be laundered through it, but also he's brought jobs to, you know, people in different families. So he's he's obviously Genovese, but he's close uh, specifically to the Colombo family and also uh, the Gambino family. And so he got his um, wealth from from these uh, bid rigging and construction scams. And, and before yeah. we get to his main scam, mm-hmm. uh, so this guy, he's already been put on trial for a, tr- a trial. Explain to us about the trial that he went on, tr- uh, that he was in, where he was found innocent. Uh, which yeah. people were very surprised he was found innocent, but that's why I talk about that lucky rabbit tail. Uh, tell us something about that. Yeah, so so this was about um, this was back in 2018, and so the feds had been looking into some of these uh, big construction deals that were happening in Long Island and and also in the Bronx, and so uh, they they uh, got on wire that. Uh, that Chuchio was uh, trying to rig construction deals. And so he was brought up in state racketeering uh, charges and he was accused of of getting a $1.8 million plumbing and sprinkler, sprinkler job that was awarded to his company. And so he was able to beat the case uh, basically by saying that the guy that he got the job from had had already told him that he had won it. And so I guess the jury believed it. And so uh, he was able to, he was found non, not guilty. And, you know, it was interesting after that trial, you know, how he was crying crocodile tears and, you know, uh, going out there as a victim of how he was falsely accused. And yeah. We're going to talk about him being a victim in the, in a minute. Uh, yeah. Talking about victimization of people. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, and so also he was also uh, uh, charged with not pay, paying taxes, uh, criminal yeah. tax fraud uh, for $94,000 in his personal income tax. Yeah. And uh, the man um, <laughs> didn't go to jail. He beat it. 
you got to give them that. So yep. in, in this country, if you're found innocent, you're found innocent. Uh, so he, it's like you said, he did the crocodile tears. He talked about how he was being uh, railroaded and how his life was destroyed. Yeah. But even though his life was destroyed, as he supposedly says, mm -hmm. what did he decide to do? Well, uh, very interesting. So, should we start with he, the lawyer first? Yeah, let's, we'll let's explain start who, with the lawyer. Okay, we'll explain who this guy is right here. Yeah, so so that guy, he's a he's an attorney. Um, what is his? Okay, uh, Jason 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 Curlin. So Jason Curlin, and he yeah. yes, and he was the guy. And, and as you know, Jason Curlin. Uh, this guy is a sleazy lawyer, and um, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what: when I when this when I see what this guy did to people's lives, mm -hmm. so what he did is he became a lotto lawyer, and yep. basically these people that would win their lottos uh, or the lottery, mm -hmm. he would go in and say, "I will take care of your money. I will invest it for you." Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, these people were. This lawyer was recommended to these people by the lotto themselves, people from the from the exactly. lottery. Yeah, exactly. So you can't blame these people that won the money for being greedy and nothing. They were told, no. "Go to this lawyer, give him your money." Yeah, they were told that if you didn't, that they were given these uh, winners these um, stories saying, oh, man, look at all these people that lost everything. You know, you need to be careful. Everyone's going to try to get your money. So you need to go to Jason. And, you know, he's got a, a securities broker named Francis Smookler that will uh, help put your money in low risk investments. So that yeah, let's, got and let's name these four. We got Jay Curlin. He yeah. wound up being charged with wire fraud and money laundering, pleaded not guilty. He's still awaiting trial. We got Francis Frank Smuckler charged with wire fraud, money laundering, mm -hmm. and extortion, pleading guilty, awaiting sentence. And yeah. then we have a, a, a gentleman here who comes from a family of gangsters, don't we? Yep, exactly. Francisco Frank Russo. Explain who he is. Yeah, so Frank Russo is actually the grandson of Andrew Mush Russo. So Andrew Mush Russo was a, uh, you know, a cousin of, of, of Carmine Persico. And then eventually, you know, Carmine died. And through the years, um, Andrew Rush was, Mush was the acting boss. So he's a capo acting boss. Then he became the, the boss, you know, when Carmine died. And by that time, you know, Andrew had lost most of his faculties. But anyway, Frank Russo, is his grandson and is an associate to the Colombo family. He's not a made guy, but an associate right. that has the Russo uh, name. Then we have Christopher Churchillo. Uh, he mm -hmm. was charged with wild fraud, money laundering, pleaded guilty, and he's awaiting sentencing. Right. And um, he's awaiting sentencing, and uh, he pleaded guilty, but this is a guy that just was crying that um, – his life was destroyed and he, he mm -hmm. decided to get involved with these guys. Mm -hmm. And how much money did they take away from these lotto winners? Oh gosh. So you had the one of, so there's at least three uh, jackpots. One was a $1.5 billion uh, mega millions jackpot is. Uh, how much? Uh, repeat that. How much? 1.5 billion. Wow. Is a, you know, that's not what they got, obviously. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, that's what the yeah, guy won. That was the, that's the, yeah, those four people in South Carolina won that. And then you had Staten Island folks that won a $245 uh, million Powerball jackpot. And then you finally had um, one that was a $150 million jackpot, and they call it the Healthy Rainbow. <laughs> hmm. And Whatever so that is. people were talked into going to this uh, lawyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he was such a, such a good man, such a good guy. Right. So what was this lawyer doing with their money? Oh, gosh, there was uh, yeah, not good stuff. So, you know, one was some of the money went to, um, you know, the gangsters plus, uh, you know. No, personally with him. Oh, personally with, with him. I'm sorry. Um, you want to talk about you know, the, the money that he loaned out. Is that what well, the money that he was getting was, he was getting a lot of money 
Mm -hmm. originally off what he was making was a lot of money. He was making tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars already, but his greed got the best of him and did in it. Right. Yeah, it definitely did. And okay. then, and then he, you're talking about like, you know, they'd given the, the money out that uh, where they were threatening. No, I'm talking about the lawyer himself. He's the one that started this. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's the one that that started it. He was, um, you know, buying expensive cars. He was, um, you know, basically was uh, taking the money that was supposed to be in a trust, and and he was taking it himself. Yes, and and then he got these these gangsters got involved with him, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. Got, and, and and so here's their downfall. Their downfall was over pure greed. Uh, um, they loaned out a jeweler some money, uh, right. and, and they wanted a lot of money back. It was, uh, actually, it was not a lot of money from what they were making. These guys, you got to remember, were making tens of millions of dollars that they were mm -hmm. robbing off these people that won the lotto and the right. lottery. They were literally draining their accounts dry. Yes. Okay. And so what they did is this jeweler, uh, they lent him a couple hundred thousand dollars. They wanted double back 400,000. Yep. 400,000. Yeah. And, and the guy uh, got nervous and decided to go to the FBI and tell them about the loan. And mm -hmm. this broke, this guy, when, once they, that guy went to the FBI, the FBI realized what was going on. And mm -hmm. what happened at that point once they realized what was going on? Well, you know, part of it was the, you know, they started putting the, the wire taps in place and then, uh, Frankie Russo specifically was threatening uh, the jeweler's life. And so they got that on tape. And so, you know, Frankie got, uh, you know, when he when they finally uh, brought the charges against this group, uh, Frankie wouldn't even get bail because of the threats that was made. Yeah. And, and, and so, you, you know, you at this point, we're talking, uh, like you said, a one point five billion, a two hundred and forty five million and a hundred and fifty million dollar jackpot, right? And so they they got their hands in this. They're they're draining millions and millions of dollars away from these jackpots. Yeah. Uh, so how much money did they actually get out of these jackpots from these people? Yeah. So at, at least ninety two million it was gotten from them, and it ended up being over eighty million that uh, Chris Chichero, uh got from the victims. Personally. Personally, yep, exactly. Eighty million dollars. Right. Talking about a score, talking about the mob being dead. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the mob would love to have made that money back in the day. We wouldn't they? You got one guy oh, making yeah. draining that money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, this guy's an earner. I can tell you that. And then he must have some damn good lawyers too, because mm -hmm. the mandatory sentence is 96 months. Mm-hmm. He got, uh, he actually got charged with uh, five years. Yep. So basically he's getting 60 months of the mandatory sentence that he's awaiting. Yeah. And why isn't, it, why isn't this guy in jail yet uh, serving his time? Well, there's a couple of reasons, you know, one, obviously, you know, he, he paid a $3 million uh, bond to be out on bail, but then um, the kind of a weird situation. This is what happened this week. So the attorney for Curlin, uh, actually for Jay so Curlin, the lawyer, Jay Curlin, the lawyer, his personal lawyer, uh, you know, so what was going to happen this week was that they were going to get their sentence, you know, uh, Russo and, and uh, the uh, Christopher the plumber, all them, they had already back in the summer of last year got an agreement with the prosecutors. So even though you have have that agreement, it it has to also be approved and by the judge. So there's no guarantees when you go before the judge, but they'll usually uh, go by the guidelines and what the prosecution wants. So anyway, last week they were supposed to go in, and then they find out that Jay Curlin's attorney had actually put in applications for a employment with the U.S. attorney's office that was prosecuting these guys. This gets so, weirder. This, gets yeah. weirder. this is weird stuff here, people. This is yeah. weird stuff going on. Yeah. So this guy, Curlin's lawyer, decides mm -hmm. now they're going to find out whether he could be go to the same 
uh, people that were prosecuting him. How weird does that sound? Yeah, I mean, the judge didn't like it. He said, well, we need to take, uh, we need to take some time out. Uh, I'm not going to sentence these people uh, today. Need to find out what's going on. And then the plan now is that Jay Curlin will go back in April to get his sentence. And then the rest of the guys probably in May or June will will get um, their sentence. But they got to get this situation with the attorney uh, for Jay Curlin uh, straightened out. Well, you know, and then for for Chris Chichero to get five years uh, almost uh, half the sentence that he's supposed to be getting. Yeah. You're talking, he literally sucked the money dry. Uh, well, not dry. These people still have money left. But the reality is they got to pay the restitution back to these people. Is that right? Yeah. And he and Chris doesn't have a history of doing that. He's, you know, he's been charged before with stuff and never paid any retribution back. But, um, yeah, so five-year maximum sentence, but, you know, you only have to, it, with good behavior, 85% of the sentence. So he could be out in four years and three months, um, you know, because of that sentence, he'll be put in a in a low to medium. Um, uh, white, collar, white collar type crime. Yeah, right? white collar uh, crime. And, you know, and that surprised me, you know, because at least, uh, 80 plus million dollars taken and that's that's all the sentence is and then you have uh, you know bernie madoff you know basically life in pretty hundreds of years you know i would have thought that this um guideline would have been you know 20 to 30 years not 96 months but you know chris uh the plumbers definitely got a uh good uh, good attorneys and where's all this money that disappeared? Did they say I, he's been living lavishly? I mean, mm -hmm. he's living top end houses, cars, dresses to the he's he dresses better than John Gotti. I mean, so yeah. where's they all said this they money? got some of the money back, so they were able to get uh, some uh, confiscated some of it. You know, obviously not not all of it, and so I'm sure that you know we'll never uh, find out. Uh, what happened to it. Also, one of the things that Chris the plumber did was, if you remember during COVID, uh, there was a need of personal protective equipment, PPE. And so right. he actually set up a business to provide PPEs to hospitals. And and um, as we know, most of that stuff, not just from him, but from a lot of people, is that the government paid all this money for PPE and it never got there the hospitals <laughs> boy i'll tell you what this is one smart bastard <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> say what you want about him but he's got it on the ball you're, yeah. you're talking about a hustler this man's a hustler <laughs> but unfortunately he's kind of destroying some lives and uh i'm yeah. hoping that these people that lost their money can get the majority of it back probably mm -hmm. not because we're talking right. about the feds trying to get their money back mm -hmm. good luck i mean uh I'll give you an example. Michael Francis was ordered to pay a couple million dollars back, and to this mm -hmm. day, he barely paid any of it back. Yeah, and I think it was 15 really million, well. actually. Yeah, 15. And he never, yeah, he hadn't hardly paid any of it back. And somehow it's just, it's been kind of forgotten. So, you know, I can what they do like, is they put it in their wife's name. That's what Chris the Palmer did. They hide it. Every, yeah. it's, it's obvious yeah. this guy, Chris Chichero, is a smart man. Yeah. And, he is. And so, you know, look. He, he, he's taken so much money over the years. He's only going to be doing five years for it. But um, it's obvious that he no he probably is he knows how to hit hide some of this money. He probably mm -hmm. has done it already. Oh uh, yeah. The man's going to go do uh do five years and uh, one second. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of doing a show. I'll call you right back. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, obvious that he's going to um uh do well on this because he's yeah. going to do five years. He's still mm -hmm. going to be under 60. And, yeah. um, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, welcome to the um, justice system. When you have people uh, doing 20 years for having a gram of cocaine on that. I know. And, that's just uh, what doesn't make sense. I mean, and that's where I have the problem with this guy. It's not, you know, I understand the construction uh uh, rig, you know, bid rigging, all that. I can handle that. But then when you take 
a person, you know, civilians' hopes and dreams from them. I just don't get that. That's yeah. Great. And that's that's what, what it comes down to. And so, you know, uh, once again, we've just ended this. We're going to end this show. Uh, this mm -hmm. is our stories for the week. I hope you guys like this. We're going to be uh, back doing this uh, again. And people, just so you know, I'm going to start a membership. And in my membership, I'm going to do two live shows a week. And the reason being is right now I'm doing one, maybe two lives, three more lives a month. And, uh, you know, people, uh, there's a lot of people around here to do lives, to beg for money, ask for money and to make money. Uh, I'm lucky because I'm doing it uh, the right way and I'm doing okay, putting down videos and making a little bit of money. So I'm not looking, uh, I, I just want to have the people listening to this show that really want to listen to this show. So, James, uh, what do you think about this show doing, uh, uh, getting a, a memberships going as we push close to 10,000 uh, subs? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a good idea. I think that there's a lot that people can do in their memberships that they're not able to do um, with YouTube. You know, YouTube uh, gives you a little bit more uh, leeway, right? When you have yeah, a membership. So membership, you can say whatever you want. I mean, it's yeah. in the membership. Yeah. And the private videos and uh, you can say and discuss the things you want. And um, we're looking just to have solid content. We're not yeah. looking to uh, bash other content people. When we go after people and, and put stuff out there, like about Gene Barillo or Jimmy Calandra, we're getting it from the actual facts. We're not attacking them with our own personal opinions. Right. You know. Okay, well, James, thank you very much for being yeah, here. Please, people, you. like this video. It's very important to like this video if you like it. If you want to, uh, if you haven't uh, subbed, please do so. We'd really appreciate it. James Proctor, is there anything you want to say before we close this out? No, just uh, appreciate everyone uh, watching this. It's a lot of fun doing the research. That's my that's the part I enjoy with this, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, we have the partnership with the, the wrestling channel and that's, you know, my primary focus, but, you know, I enjoy doing, uh, you know, doing this weekly show with you and, you know, and this, Chris Chiro, this Chris Chiro thing with the lotto was your idea and mm -hmm. you came back and you, and you dropped all this stuff and I read it. I was like, Holy crap. I can't believe this guy pulled this off. And they say the mob is dead, but here's a oh, one quick thing, people, this is the problem yeah. with the mob now. The Genovese family, they say, has 200 soldiers. But here's the thing. There's only a couple of, uh, only the hierarchy is making money right now. Right. The soldiers on, on the streets are not doing like these guys, like this guy has done. Right. And that's the problem with the modern mob now. Mm -hmm. The people with the money are making money. The people that right. don't have the money are having a hard time on the streets making money because you cannot do the things in the mob that you used to do Right. Like threaten people, kill people. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you could threaten them, but you see where that gets you. A lot of times you get arrested for that. Yeah. But, but the mob's still alive. This proves, this goes to show you the mob's still out there making money, aren't they, James? Yeah, most definitely. And it's a lot of money, too. Yes. Uh, it's a lot of money. Welcome to the internet era. Everybody's yep. making money off of it. Well, yep. James, you take care. And thank you. Uh, close your show out. Everybody, thank you. Like I said, hit the like. Please uh, come back to our show. Uh, we're going to be putting one of these up a week, uh, covering the week with mob stories, the ones that we think are the best. Take care, people. Yeah.